number one thing you're going to need before you start Leathercraft is a good cup of coffee. Nay, a great cup of coffee. You can need that laser focus and that energy and just the goodness of caffeine. So get one of these, it'll be well worth it. The first thing I ever made out of leather was this leather camera strap. Before Leathercraft, I was a professional wedding photographer and I needed a strap that would last me a long time and that was a high quality strap. So I decided, hey, why not make one? I like making things with my hands and designing things, so let's do it. I went on Amazon and looked up leather starter kit or leather tool kit for starters and I found one for about $120. I purchased it not knowing exactly what was in that toolkit and just tried to figure things out by myself. Back then I wish I had some sort of guidance as to what tools to buy or what I wouldn't need in that kit. So that's what today's video is all about, just helping you get started in Leathercraft. Hopefully what you see here today will help you figure out what to purchase and what not to purchase and where to put your money. So today I'm going to kind of guide you through what tools you're going to need in terms of making small leather goods. When you start in Leathercraft, I think it's smart to do smaller things before you start making bags and satchels and, and all those bigger things. So today we're going to kind of go through or walk through the steps to making a wallet and what tools you will need to do that. The number one thing you're going to need is a template. If you do not know what size to make the pockets of the wallet or how big to make the wallet, that can be a little frustrating and you can waste a lot of leather and a lot of time. So I've made that very easy for you. Shameless plug. You can go to my website and you can purchase a wallet template, print it on some cardstock and have at it. I'll put the links in the descriptions of everything that I'm going to be talking about today. If the links aren't in the description, it's because I do not know where to get it. Don't message me asking, where do you get that? Because I have no idea and I probably won't get back to you. Anyways, let's keep going. So the next thing you're going to need before you start anything is, sorry, my floors are very squeaky, but you're going to need a cutting mat and uh, a large surface to do your leather craft on. I have a big table here with a cutting surface or cutting mat already installed. So my whole workshop or my whole workspace is cuttable. So I don't have to worry about using a mat, but I suggest getting a mat like this and something like this, like a punch pad. Just a quick reminder, everything that I talk about, I'll be putting links in the description. Next thing you're gonna need is a good knife. And there are many different types of knives you can buy, uh, different styles, they do different things, but these are the knives I suggest to get. The number one knife, it's probably the cheapest knife that I own, is a Olfa rotary cutter. And this is a 60 millimeter cutter. It's got a nice depth right here so you can cut through some thick leather. And uh, it's really, really useful. I use this all the time, especially cutting out quick patterns or cutting really straight lines with your ruler. I definitely suggest this. Another knife I suggest is a straight blade or an X-Acto knife. I use this knife here. This is called the Lindispensable knife by Verges Blanchard. You can use these knives for intricate cuts, smaller cuts that you probably can't get with a rotary cutter. Just a quick note, a lot of the tools that I started with, I gave away or I upgraded because I no longer use them. So I'm gonna be talking about the tools that I use personally. They might be a bit more expensive, but you can always get a cheaper version or a cheaper model of the tools that I use. Just keep that in mind. Another knife that I use is a Japanese skiving knife. This knife is used to skive down pockets or thin out layers of leather that are too thick. So when you're stacking layers together on, on a wallet, can get really chunky really fast. So the inside pockets, so when you're stacking pockets on top, you can skive them down or thin them out to create a thinner pocket. And this is what you would use. This is called a Japanese skiving knife. Also, many crafters use this knife for their whole project. So they use it as their straight blade. You hold it like this and you pull and you cut towards yourself like this. Uh, you'd use it as a skiving knife. You put your leather um, down and then you skive, push through and uh, thin out your pockets that way. So some crafters use this knife and this knife exclusively. So Japanese skiving knife. So after cutting out your patterns, you're gonna wanna glue the pieces together. And what I suggest are foam brushes. And these things come in big packages of 25 that I buy from Amazon, and they last quite a long time actually. If you keep them in a container such as this, Actually, one of my buddies from Lift Ride Live sent me one of these containers to try out. Um, you can actually put your foam brush in there, close the lid, 
and it'll keep your brush nice and wet for a long time, actually up to a day, which is really, really great. So a foam brush. I get a lot of questions about what type of glue I use and I use Eco Weld from Tandy Leather. It's a water-based contact adhesive and it is a really good option to those more stronger barge chemical smelling glues. I really don't like using barge. A lot of people use barge and I just can't stand it because you want to be able to smell the leather and not the glue that you're using. So I like using this Eco Weld. After gluing all of your pieces together, you're going to need a wing divider to mark your stitch line. And a wing divider is a little device like this. I've got three of them because I don't like changing the sizes all the time. So I have one for my stitch line. I have one for my trim allowance and I have another random one um, that I can use for different sizes or different measurements. So a wing divider is a device that allows you to mark a line on your leather for your stitch line. And they're very, very cheap and they're very, very useful. And I suggest getting a few of them so that you don't have to keep changing your sizing. But if you're on a budget, one is perfect. I use a sewing machine and I also hand stitch. So depending on what you have, if you're on a budget or if you're just starting, you probably will not have a sewing machine. But what I suggest is getting some pricking irons or stitching punches. When I first started in leather craft, I bought really cheap tools um, that really helped me along the way. This is a four in one punch from Tandy Leather. And this thing was really great to learn with. The only thing I do not like about this is that the holes don't line up exactly. You know, they're not in a very, very straight line, but it was a great tool to start with. And I know a lot of crafters that still use this today. Um, and it's a very, very effective and cheap tool. You can get a, a whole bunch of these. You can replace the teeth of them and they work very, very well. Depending on what kind of a stitch you like, you can use different types of pricking irons or punches. I've upgraded to the Cinebrox stitching punch and this produces round holes and a very, very straight and consistent line. It's a higher quality tool and you're going to pay the price tag for it. If you feel like you're going to pursue this craft and uh, kind of continue in it, I suggest getting a higher quality tool like the Cinebrox. This is the stitching punch. I don't tend to use a stitching punch very often. I use the pricking irons and pricking irons are for uh, more refined looking stitches. So with the smaller thread, they're more angled stitches. And I I just personally like the way that a stitching uh, or a pricking iron looks like on leather goods, but that's just me. There are also different types of pricking irons. This is actually called a round dent pricking iron. And it has these little teeth that produce a smaller hole for more refined stitching as well, but in a different style than the slanted ones. So it's totally up to you. It's totally your call on how you want your stitching to look, but you're going to need a stitching punch or pricking irons to hand stitch your leather goods. When using a stitching punch or pricking irons, you're going to need a mallet. And something that has a little bit of weight to it is really good. When I first started, I actually used a mallet that was very lightweight and I'd be you know, using a lot of force to get those pricking irons through the leather. But I suggest a heavier weighted mallet. This is a mallet from Barry King. Like I said, there's many different styles and price ranges of stuff, but this is the one that I use and I suggest. One thing to remember is to not use metal on metal. You'll start to mushroom out the top of the head there and it will ruin your pricking iron or your punch or whatever you're using. It's better to use a mallet that has a plastic head, just to remember that. Depending on which pricking iron or stitching punch you're using, you can use different types of thread. This is thread from Main Thread, and this is Vinimo Thread. I used this when I first started because I liked the chunky looking stitch, and I used it with the round stitching punch, the one that produces the round holes, the bigger holes. But then I moved on to a more refined look with these pricking irons and I switched to a smaller thread, which is a bonded nylon. This is a Japanese thread. It's a little bit more expensive. I really like the way that it looks and the strength of it. It is a very strong bonded nylon. Depending on what type of thread you use, you're going to use different types of needles. These are John James needles. You can see that they're different in their size. Depending on which thread you're using, you're going to use different types of needles. And I will leave again, links in the description where you can get these needles. When you're stitching, you're going to need a really good stitching pony. I have bought stitching ponies in the past that were terrible and they were really frustrating to use. And I was really wrestling my leather project, but thankfully the company called Dream Factory has made these amazing little stitching clamps that work so well. You can take them anywhere. They're very, very collapsible. 
literally take them anywhere on the airplane. You can use them at your kitchen table, on your workshop, anywhere because they fold up really nice. They clamp onto your table with this little screw. They open up like this, put your leather project in there or your wallet. You use this to close this up and you can adjust it with this little knob here. Amazing, amazing stitching pony. I cannot say enough good things about this. You will need one of these. So after stitching your wallet together, you're gonna to wanna to sand the edges down to make them nice and flat and smooth. And you're going to wanna to bevel that extra lip that happens uh, after you've sanded. So I suggest getting just any sort of sandpaper. I use 240 here. You can go all the way up to 600, 1000. It really depends on how smooth you want those edges and how glossy you want the finish to be. Edge bevelers. There are many different edge bevelers that you can buy, many different companies that make them. They range from you know, really cheap to really expensive. I use this craft tool one. I've bought a few of these ones because the tips tend to break. They're not the highest quality, but they're a good budget friendly quality tool. I use Pelisanto tools and they are some really beautiful handcrafted tools with a higher quality steel that stays sharper longer and you can strop them to keep them nice and sharp. Um, but that's something that I've upgraded to over the years that I've been using them. Pelisanto tools, they come in different sizes. I've got a number one and a number two. The difference between them is actually pretty substantial. The one takes off just a, a hair of the, of the edge there to make a nice little bevel. And then the, uh, the number two takes off a little bit more to make even more of a bevel. So it really depends on what you're going for, what look you're going for. If you want a nice big bevel or a smaller bevel, edge bevelers are a must. So after beveling, you're going to want to finish your edges. And what I suggest, the only thing I suggest to finish your edges is tokenol. Tokenol was a huge game changer for me. This stuff is the best finishing agent you could ever use. I don't suggest using gum trank, trank, gum trangacanth. I didn't even know how to pronounce that thing. I don't suggest using gum. I suggest using tokenol. It leaves a nice, beautiful, glossy finish on your edges, and I will not ever go away from this stuff. It is beautiful. I can't say enough good things about it, as you can tell. I also got a lot of questions about if I used tokenol as a glue, and I don't. I just put this glue inside a smaller tokenol container. After applying tokenol to your edges, you're going to want to use a slicker. And I use this thing so much. I have a burnisher machine behind me here. This thing, it's a Coco Bolo uh, burnishing wheel or burnishing cylinder, but I find myself burnishing a lot of my goods by hand. And I just use this really cheap hand slicker. It's great, I use it all the time, I love it. And after a while it develops like this patina in there and it just works even better. So you're gonna need a hand slicker. This is an amazing tool. This is another tool that I suggest getting. It's a, actually a very cheap tool. You can get it from Amazon. It's called the Thread Zap 2, and it's used to burn the ends of the thread after you're done cutting them. And it, it melts the thread down, and then you can use your finger to kind of rub it into the leather, and it just finishes your thread, which works super, super well. And it's fun to use. I like it. If I had a dollar for every time someone asked me where the heck I got this acrylic marker from, it's an edge die marker, I would be a very, very rich man. The problem is where I got it, they don't sell it anymore. So if I haven't answered you where I got this thing, it's because I have no idea. And if you know where to get this thing, please let me know. There's one place in the UK that sells it, but I don't know where they sell it here. So I'll put the link of this in the description of where you can get it. I think it's in the UK, but I'm not sure you can get it there. But this is a really cool edge dye marker that you can fill with dye and you can use it to dye the edges of your leather goods. I use it after I apply tokenol to my edges and then I wipe it off and reburnish the edges. A few other tools that I forgot to mention that I'm gonna mention now are one, this edge rougher. This is another tool that a lot of people have asked me about. It's a Craft Tool Pro edge rougher. And it's a tool that roughs up the edge of the leather or your leather where you want to glue so that the glue adheres better. And so this is a really popular tool and a really cool tool to have in your tool arsenal. If you don't want to spend the money for this tool, you can also use sandpaper or a knife sideways and you can kind of scratch and score your leather so that the glue will stick to it better. 
Another tool that I forgot to mention is a very important tool, and that is called a scratch all. A scratch all is a tool that you use to mark your leather, especially tracing out your patterns on your leather or marking holes that you're gonna punch later. It's a really important tool, very cheap, but very necessary. A ruler, you're gonna need one of these. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. This is a corner punch, and corner punches are also a little bit more pricey, but if you don't feel like spending the money on this, you can always use a knife with a quarter. You know, you put the 25 cent piece or quarter or whatever you use to, to have a, a round corner and cut around with a knife. But if you feel like spending the extra money to get a punch like this, it's worth it. I use this all the time to finish the corners or cut corners on my leather goods, the craft tool punch. You can also get this tool, it's the Kyoshin L tool. It's also a corner punch and it works well. But if you don't wanna spend the money on something like this, you can always use your knife and cut your corners that way. Another tool that you might wanna use, which I find very helpful after you finish your leather project is called a bone folder. And it's a tool that you pretty much put in your pockets to open up pockets so that the glue, if you've over glued, you can kind of open up and just stretch out the pockets a little bit. It's a really useful tool. I use it all the time when I'm finishing, like I said, a bone folder, really good. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm sure there's many other tools that you could possibly use, but I suggest these tools to get started. All of these tools are not the cheapest, but like I said, you can get cheaper versions of them and I will try and put them in the description uh, so you can shop and buy things that you will use and that you will need. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helps you with your journey on starting leather craft and that it takes you somewhere, uh, somewhere cool. You never know what you can make with this stuff or where it will take you. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate all of you guys. Thanks for your love and your support. Um, if you would like to support this channel, I now have a Patreon. You can check it out. I will also put that in the link below. And uh, yeah, anything would be great. Anything, a dollar, two whatever's on your heart, but hey, no worries. I will be doing giveaways through the Patreon, so if you are a Patreon of mine, then I will be doing exclusive giveaways of wallets and templates and all that other good stuff. So, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, share, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.